Math. Hey everybody, this is Mr. Regner and this is the Aftermath. Today we're looking at week 27, day one. So it's introduction to our week of focus. It's a good idea for you to follow along with your paper as you watch this video. We'll hopefully set things up for you for the week. So if you have a firm understanding today, you can build on that throughout the week and do very well on your focus quiz. So let's get right to it by looking at number one. Here we are, number one says a square with a side of dub of y is inside a square with a side of five as pictured below. Which expression represents the area of the shaded region in terms of y? All right, so here's our diagram and this is gonna be helpful for us. Obviously a square has sides of uh, the same length. So five here, five there, five here, five there. Same thing with our y's, it'd be y's all the way around. We want to know an expression here from our A, B, C, D options that represents the area of just the shaded version, right? So if I know the area of my gray uh, outside square, I can figure this out, and I know then that area equals base times height. Now, oddly enough, the base and the height are the same for a square. So if my base and height are both five, that's five times five, the area of what I outlined there is going to be 25 square units, okay? And then the area of this inside line, which maybe I'm gonna make this like a double thickness line to maybe make it stand out as being something different. Again, I use the same area formula. That's y times y. So the area here would be y squared right? Y times Y is Y squared. The area of this big thing here is 25 square units. So I really have 25 square units, but I don't want this white part in the middle. I just want the gray part. So think about that for a moment. If I know this whole thing is 25, but I want to cut out that middle part with some scissors, get in there and just go, what would the area be? Let's look at my options. I have 25. I like where I'm headed here. 25 plus y squared. Am I taking the area of this whole thing and then throwing on an extra part? No, I'm trying to cut it out with scissors, remember? So it can't be letter A. Is it 25 minus y squared? In other words, am I taking the area of the big square and then subtracting or cutting out the y squared in the middle? Hopefully you're nodding your head thinking, yes, indeedy, because that's correct. Letter B is correct. Just to make sure here, letter C says 10 minus y squared. There they're thinking they're gonna fool you by somebody saying area equals base plus height, five plus five. That's not area. So it can't be C or D. So that is our answer for number one. Again, use some logical thought there along with our area formula and you guys are gonna be just fine. Let's move on now to number two. Number two says what number is equivalent to the expression three times four squared plus six divided by two. Now some of you might look at this and be a little thrown off just by the language. What number is equivalent, what? In other words, they're saying, what does this expression equal? So here's our expression. We basically just need to solve it. All right, so if I have three times four squared plus six divided by two, I'm just gonna rewrite that whole thing on my paper that way I can use my old pal PEMDAS because that's what we're going to be using here. So do I have any parentheses? Nope. Do I have any exponents? Yep. So here it is, 4 squared. Remember, 4 squared means 4 times 4. So I know 4 times 4 equals 16. So I'm going to rewrite this whole thing out, but now I have 16 here. Let me keep going with PEMDAS where I multiply and divide in the same step and I work from left to right. So I have three times 16. Well, that would be multiplication and that's actually from left to right. So maybe I don't know what three times 16 is. You might sit there and scratch your head and stare at your paper for a long time, but don't do that. Instead, just do the math. So I'm gonna do the math over here. 16 times three. Six times three, that's gonna give me 18, three times one, that's gonna give me three plus one is four. 
So 16 times 3 is 48. And some of you might have just known that fact, and that would be fantastic. So I can take this and make that 48 plus 6 divided by 2. Continuing with PEMDAS, I have a division problem, 6 divided by 2. So I have 48 plus 6 divided by 2. Again, if you don't know this, you can do the math off to the side, but I'm pretty sure most of us know that 6 divided by 2 is 3. And then to round out PEMDAS, I have one thing left that's addition, 48 plus 3, that's going to leave me with 51. And that's my answer. There's no label for number 2, we just have an answer. So again, number 2, hopefully very, very easy for you once you get past the vocabulary and maybe being initially thrown off by that. Let's roll on now to number 3. Number 3 says, you have piano lessons every 7th day and cooking lessons every 5th day. Today, you have both lessons. In how many days will you have both lessons on the same day again? Now, this reminds me of a question that we had on a unit test. We've seen it before a couple of different times. And so we know that we have piano lessons every seventh day. So I'm just going to write piano, and that's every seventh day. Okay, then we have cooking, and that is every fifth day, right? So if I know it's every seventh day, every fifth day. I have piano and cooking on uh, uh, both of them today. So I want to figure out when I'm going to have them or in how many days it'll take until it rolls around that I have both classes on the same day again. Here, I don't know if you remember this, but hopefully you do. We should be thinking about LCM or least common multiple. And in order to find the least common multiple for 7 and 5, I just write out my multiples of 7 and 5 and try to find a pair that match up. Let me start with my piano. So I have 7, 14, 21, 28, 35, 42, 49, 56. And I could keep on going and going and going and going, but I think I'm going to stop there. Then for cooking, I have 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, 35, and alarm bells are probably going off right now because you recognize that we have 35 here and 35 there, and I also recognize I need a new highlighter. So I'll work on that. So 35 is going to be my least common multiple. Just doubling, ch double checking here, are there any other numbers that are smaller that might be even lower than that? No. So 35 is my, my least common multiple. So what does that really mean then? It means that uh, in 35 days, I'm going to have both piano and cooking again, right? So if I have it in 7 days, 14 days, 21 days, 28 days, 35 days, I'll have piano. For cooking, same thing. They match up again in 35 days. All right, so that one, again, if we know LCM, if we know how to find the least common multiple, that's all we're doing. Let's move on now to number four. Number four says, an outdoor adventure company offers horseback riding. The total cost, C, for H hours of horseback riding is represented by the following equation. C equals 12H plus 26. Which statements below are true? So for this one, we want to make sure we totally understand what's going on here before we move on over here and figure out exactly uh, which one could be right. So they give us this equation. We know C is the cost, right? Because it says total cost is C. And we know H is going to be the hours, okay? So it says here for letter A, the cost for one hour of horseback riding is $38. Boy, I don't know that, but guess what I can do? If I know one hour, I can plug that in here where I see H. So let me do that really quickly, and you're going to find that I'm going to have uh, maybe a lot of extra math work here. So I know then the cost I'm looking for is $38, right? Cost. And I know the hours is going to be 1. So I could take 12 times 1 plus 26. Well, order of operations again, right? 12 times 1 is 12 plus 26. And then 26 plus 12, that's going to give me 38. Is 38 equal to 38? Yes. So A is correct. Let me do the same thing here. It says the cost for 2 hours is $76. 
Well, again, maybe I could just plug this in again. So let me do it. Okay, so $76 equals 12 times 2 plus 26. Order of operations, 12 times 2 is 24. 24 plus 26. Let me think about this for a minute. I got a little bit tricked there because I wanted to say it was true and I wanted to say that was 76, but 76 does not equal 50. So B is not right. Letter C, it says the cost for, there we go, the cost for five hours is 86. Let me think, 86 equals 12 times five plus 26. Let me think, what is 12 times five? That would be 12, 24, 36, 48. Well, now I got lost here. 12, <laughs> 24, 36, 48, 60. So 12 times five is 60. And if you didn't know that, you could always do math off to the side for all of these, really. All right, so is $86 equal to 60 plus 26, 60, 70, 86? Yes, so C is correct. How about letter D, and I'll work this off over here. The cost of eight hours is 122, so 122 equals 12 times eight plus 26. Order of operations. If I know that 12 times five, by the way, is 60, I just need to add on three more 12s to figure out 12 times eight. So 12, 24, 36. If I take 36 and 60, I should get 96. So that is 96 plus 26. So 96 plus 26, well six plus six is 12. Nine plus two is 11, plus one is 12. That's 122. So letter D is correct. And then letter E, let's see how my video is doing here. Uh, the cost for 12 hours of horseback riding is 183. So 183 equals 12 times 12 plus 26. You may know already 12 times 12 is 144 plus 26. Kind of, I'm, I'm rooting for this one here, but I'm not sure it's going to happen. So 4 plus 6, that's 10. 4 plus 2 is 6, plus 1 is 7. So this becomes 170. So sadly, E is not correct either. So my answers here are A, C, and D. So on number 4, uh, we've had a couple tough ones for number 4 for the last couple of weeks, but hopefully today you see this one's pretty easy. All we do is we use that, that uh, equation they give us plug in the numbers for our cost and our total number of hours, then just use PEMDAS to solve. That's our focus for this week. Make sure that you're paying attention uh, and writing down your notes for day one. Then day two will be much easier. You'll know what you're doing. You just practice those skills. By day three, you are rolling and quiz time comes around and you're all set for a perfect 10 out of 10 on focus. I'm Mr. Regner. This has been The Aftermath. Have a great day and thanks for watching. Math. Aftermath, it's the aftermath. Aftermath, it's the aftermath. Math class is fun, but when it's done, stay in the zone. On your own, it's math review. Made just for you. Take a video wherever you go. Aftermath, it's the aftermath. Aftermath, it's the aftermath. Oh yeah.